Remember when your metabolism was good as like that? <laughs> no, it was never. It was never good. Oh no. Mm-mm. As sad as it is, I don't support putting children under eighteen on a diet. But I had to be on a low carb diet in middle school because I was very large. Oh. Well, you know what happens. Does it, Lance? Here we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Comic second. Chop. Yeah, the second entry of the Comic Chop. I was, my note says the <laughs> chopping block. I have no idea where that came from. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the Comic Chop. If you don't understand, it's a play on comic book shop. So where me and Lance and sometimes some very special guests will talk about things we found at the comic book store from comics to graphic novels, to figurines, to sweet little toys, because we are children in grown men's bodies. Facts. <laughs> but we do want to say thank you sincerely to everybody who tuned into the first episode. I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but it's just a yeah. YouTube series we have. And within the first four days, we got more than 40 views. So thanks, everybody. That's super cool because Lance and I love doing these and yes. we'd still do it even if there was two views, but it's nice knowing some people are watching. <laughs> it's just not us. Then us rewatching it on videos. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess that would be the two views if we only had two views. <laughs> we are back today coming to you maybe with the comic book you've never heard of because I certainly have never heard of it, but this comic is the 2021 published bunny mask published by aftershock comics and created by paul tobin and andre muddy andre or andrea moody i know sometimes andreas no there's no s thank you for trying Uh. but i know with men i think it might be france andre is spelled like andrea but if it is a woman and she's not french it's Andrea. Yeah. So Andre or Andrea Muddy and Taylor Esposito. Esposito. Um, the last episode, we had a lot to talk about the publisher because it was a pretty fine publisher. I believe it was Boom Comics. Um, this is Aftershock Comics, which the only thing I could find is it was an American comic book publisher founded in April of 2015. It won some sort of award in April, I mean, in uh, 2017 for like the up and coming publisher of the year. Um, but in December 2022, Aftershock Comics filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, leaving many of their contributing artists unpaid for their work. So mm. I understand you can't pay people if you don't got the money. So I'm not saying boo to them, but it's an unfortunate situation. So hopefully all those artists found work elsewhere. I mean, it's indie books, man. It's 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 a rough thing. And, you know, I mean, as much as I feel bad for them in the sense that they didn't pay their artists and that sucks i mean obviously aftershock was trying their best to be an outlet for people who probably wouldn't have even gotten the chance in the first place from other places yes so it's hard to shit on people (laughs) yeah like when you say things like that not you specifically but when i say things like and the artist was unpaid it's an unfortunate situation but sometimes it will mistakenly be said as like fuck them they were just using people I don't think that's the case. I think you just run out of money and you can't you can't pay people with money you don't have. Yeah. But they to your point they were an outlet for a lot of first timers. So uh they published a I believe it was called Chalice. Yeah. It was I just read by it and it had the first transgender superhero which that's cool. So, yeah. you know, given the outlet for that so that trans people can see themselves in comic books as well. So bravo, very sorry yeah. that didn't work out. I was actually looking at some of the their series just to see like if I recognized yeah. any of them. And I don't think I've seen any of them in my adventures. I mean, they would have stopped showing in 2022, but I think Baby Teeth I've seen at the store. And I okay. think that's it. Oh, wow. Okay. My comic shop, uh, Coliseum Comics, which they're a great, they're, uh, some people are a little against them kind of because they're more uh, of a corporate kind of 
atmosphere. Um, I like them personally because if one place doesn't have the comics and they're owned by different people, they're just kind of uh, united under the same banner of the name here in or- uh, Orlando and a couple of places outside of Orlando, obviously, like in Jacksonville and, and places like that. But um, if you can't find a comic book and somebody else is put somewhere or somewhere else, you know what I mean? Like, they'll actually send it to you because they're they communicate with each other and stuff like that and oh, they have cool. a really cool system of of uh back issue bucks they do you know and you you get a you know a buck every time you get some something from uh holding books or whatever they do a really great job i, I again I, I get it a lot of like the little indie book companies that i try to still go to regardless you know i mean that is my main place just because it makes it easier for me uh yeah you know, they'll even call in and check up on you. Like, you're like, they're like, hey, which one? Make sure you're okay. Aww. I mean, I know it's mostly because they, <laughs> they want you to come in and get your books that they've put aside for you. Yeah. But generally, like, I, I honestly think they're really nice. Everybody there is 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 awesome. Um, yeah, I've got a couple of books from them. I didn't actually know that uh, aftershock was actually uh, either closed down or maybe they were bought up by somebody else. Maybe because I thought I've seen some couple stuff that still has come out from them. I think I've gotten a couple of issues not too long ago i mean that's something maybe well, if everybody wants to see some of our new polls for what we got for the week maybe we could do that and start showing oh, yeah. uh, maybe next episode or something like that i mean i i have some but i don't want to get up and have to go do it or we could do it and you know pause it <laughs> he's not wearing pants everybody um <laughs> that's what he's trying to say yeah i think that'd be cool we can actually i think we should do little shorts like of things that we pulled because you know how on Wednesdays or Thursdays, we go you know, make a little new a comic little... day. Yeah, so it just has to be under a, a minute. BT Dubs, everybody. Today is free comic book day. So if you have a comic store next to you, go check out what's there and support your local comic book shop. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but back to you, Buddy Mask. I wanted to ask you, where yes. did you see this? How did you get it? I've never heard of this before uh, until you sent it to me. I usually stick into the independent world uh, as much as. I, I don't want to shit on Marvel or DC. It's just, Drag you know, Drag <laughs> Drag him down. Uh, I, and I, I love him. And I, and I have a cousin who works for uh, Marvel as well. And she puts out really good content. And she uh, was on board with the team that actually put out another uh, Hispanic character uh, out there in the world, which I thought was really great. And she was actually, I think, on board where it was um, most of the Hispanic characters. Uh, superheroes that are in uh marvel as you know or if you don't know uh <laughs> me and mikey are definitely hispanic <laughs> news to me just kidding right <laughs> <laughs> only hispanic character i know of in comics is deadly class oh really yeah yeah no, I um i don't know oh, if blue on. beetle was hispanic in the comics i know he was in the movie initially there's been i mean some change ups where if the mantle has been changed so for example uh ghost rider uh he's now hispanic uh but he drives a car now it's not going to be uh johnny uh nicholas cage and, uh, <laughs> nicholas cage <laughs> i love nicholas cage i don't know if i like him in <laughs> his ghost rider at all but yes um but no uh uh just it's kind of cool to have that so like i i do give a lot of love for marvel in that sense it's also hiring and keeping my cousin in a job <laughs> that's always nice of her to have that as indie, indie books seem to really f- fill my gap of, of wanting to read in, in the sense of cool stuff. Uh, but uh, as a bunny mask, I saw it and it had a horror kind of vibe to it. And I, I've liked a couple little things that Aftershock has done that I, even though I can't really quite remember it off the top of my head, some of the ones, the other ones I have. But um, this one was really cool. I thought the bunny mask was kind of interesting. She had like the jagged teeth in the beginning, you know, the tongue kind of looked like she's biting on it and bleeding. So I was like, I was like, okay, this looks interesting. And a lot of times, Coliseum will kind of get the vibe of what I like. So they'll pull stuff for me just to pull stuff because they know that's kind of oh, the person cool. I'm into or writers that I like or artists. So they curate uh, it for you. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's really cool. Um, so that's kind of how I I, I, found, I found upon I fell upon I guess would be the best way to say that. Um, Bunny mask. I never heard of it until you sent it to me, and you actually sent me the second one first. So thanks. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that no nah, it's cool <laughs> sorry not sorry yeah <laughs> hey, I, just have, I know i just have another one now um <laughs> we're just trying to help those artists out <laughs> oh and that's also what i was gonna say like you know i don't feel like don't feel guilty for having a disclaimer of like everyone but marvel because let's face it they don't need our money these independent oh, yeah. creators need our money <laughs> yeah yeah oh a news update uh 
Andrea is a guy from the book. It actually shows it in the back here. Oh. Of, of then them. it's Andre. Andre, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, while you were gone, I was like, I was flipping through it. I'm like, oh. Oh, that's how he's, or it's a man. Or yeah. he's a man. <laughs> yes. um, so it's funny you mentioned Bunny Mask because I will say Bunny Mask does have a lot of really nice images and the creature of Bunny Mask, there are some images where she looks really creepy and like terrifying. The thing that bugs me about her is she looks like a little bit like my older sister and there's no way of getting around that even though she's a monster they do make her sexual like yeah she yeah. is she's a sexual being we haven't really explored it yet which interestingly enough i think you have the same book i do the actual story is just half the book. The second half of the book is all art. So I was like, man, I still have a long way to go in this book. And then I finished it yesterday and I was like, oh, I guess I don't. The rest is just pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a lot of like concept art and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know, maybe that's where they put some of that money. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, there's like a, a picture of her looking like she's in Space Jam yeah oh yeah, yeah she's the, the bunny like yeah. anything that has to do with a reference to bunnies like oh okay i didn't it. connect it yeah yeah because uh uh i mean there's this one i don't know we where it kind of reminds me of uh kind of like catwoman yeah yeah because then the other one i think is the batman spoof yeah but how far have you gotten into the series uh I think like just the next book that I, I have, the second one was the, as far as I went in, in certain things. Um, and maybe that's because I, I, I wasn't able to get the rest. And I, because a lot of times with independent books, which is a blessing and a curse sometimes, mm -hmm. is I can come in and go try to grab my books, like I'll just by myself without having somebody call me. <laughs> yeah. And I have maybe two or three, yeah. like where the machine, which is Marvel and DC, like spit out books like, constantly like you can get so far behind when it comes mm -hmm. to something in, in those series where when it's indie it's kind of like everything kind of takes its time it's you know like sometimes they'll even they'll do two or three and have it already done before they even put out one yeah just to make sure they they can get in time you know so everything is running on on schedule um but yeah, yeah. um yeah it's very oversaturated yeah, 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 yeah. Like in general, what were your thoughts on it? Um, so I liked it. It was, I was expecting more, but in the sense of like the backstory, because, and just to kind of give the audience a quick summary of what the book is, basically an event happens where there's like a psychopath who brings this man to a cave or like an underground dwelling of some sort, and the psychopath's daughter is there. Correct me if I'm wrong, because sometimes I feel like I don't read things correctly. But <laughs> he's making them dig, I think. And then this bunny character, who's a woman who looks like Ariana Grande with the SNM mask on. <laughs> right. Totally yeah, does. pretty much comes and <laughs> saves them. Yeah. And so this is like what this is them in the future. Not like the future, but like in present time. Yeah. And they're starting to get visions again of the bunny woman. Bunny well, man. also, don't forget there was the voices. And then there's two different characters that are going on here. There is uh, the the snitch mm -hmm. character, which is the one that was giving the father initially uh, of the daughter uh, the voices, like the truth is what it's quote unquote. Like he, yeah. the, whoever can hear this voice actually hears the truth of sinners to, to some degree. So that's kind of like what their thing is. And, and so I think the father was under this belief of who's a sinner, who's not, who's done bad. Cause technically you, I guess you hear other people's inner thoughts. So like kind of a maddening situation where he's yeah. constantly hearing other people's thoughts of what they've done, or he's the, the snitch is telling them. He's snitching what on their them. sins. Yeah. He's like, he's basically telling them what their, their actual sins are what they've done wrong yeah uh so you can understand kind of the part where it's kind of seems very <laughs> maddening to whoever has to oh yeah that 
Yeah, and so and then there's like a weird twist where like you think the little girl in the beginning is dead, but then you find out that she's not, and so the main guy and the girl kind of like are hanging out getting a little romantic which i guess is fine they're both adults but it's like a 14 year difference so yeah i mean and and i like the fact that the book uh the main guy uh tyler yeah uh he definitely is kind of like hey because his roommate's like just yeah. do her everybody's and, like get it and he's like no there's a lot of difference in age here it's a little weird i i i commend that in the sense of from your casual normal bullshit like book yeah. where it's like a guy would take advantage or they would just make it seem like oh this dude's you know a uh it's just a creeper <laughs> it's really not a big deal like 14 years because if you think about it i'm guessing her name is b and i'm guessing she's maybe like 25 ish so that means that he would be around 39 which when you hear that you're like that's not bad but i think the weird thing is the history of when she was a little girl and right. he was an adult and they were in that situation together. That's kind of strange. But you know what? If that past never happened and they just met each other at 25, 39, that's fine. So, um, but the thing about this first edition, which is the first four issues, is that you get a lot of horror, you get a lot of gross stuff, but you don't get a lot of backstory. And so you don't really know what the intention of Bunny Mask is. So I am interested to keep going and find out like if we do get more of her lore. It is good. I really like the the way that it's drawn. I like it a lot better than Witches. I think it's a lot cleaner. The image, the illustration, story-wise. It still yeah. has that vibe though. It has that like art-wise. It still has kind of a vibe of, of like watercolor art almost a little bit. You yeah. know, but like a cleaner watercolor if that's possible. <laughs> they don't use that weird like filtering that annoyed me last time where it was like dust specks over the image, which I was like, yeah. I can't even see. It's like a <laughs> splatter ink kind of vibe where it's yeah. like, oh, okay, I get it. But at the same time, do we need it? <laughs> exactly. So, you know, there's a couple of things that we're reviewing where we actually have the second issues. And so I'm thinking when we do what I will call season two of the comic top we'll do the second ones so i already have bunny mask um two thanks to lance so i think <laughs> we'll probably review it again whenever the time comes <laughs> yeah. season two to do the next one um what are your overall thoughts about it um i i thought it was really good uh i i'm, in, I'm interested to figure out if they actually ended the snitch does it does it still exist um I, I thought there's obviously a couple uh, plot holes, obviously not getting a lot of backstory. Mm -hmm. um, the situation that happens with Bunny Mask and, and uh, Tyler and Tyler uh, with the, one of their inner counters. I won't mm -hmm. give it away. Their but, inner um, counters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, and then, and then the fact that you wonder if the girl that he thinks is B is maybe uh, mm -hmm. Bunny Mask there's enough here to keep you going, which yeah. it obviously kept me going. And obviously it seems feels like it's kept you kind of going in the sense of, cause like the way it ends, it's, it's a decent cliffhanger for sure. Yeah. So if you want to read it, we won't spoil the ending, but there is a twist where you're like, Oh my God. <laughs> um, but we will read it. So they're like, I was coming into this little episode. Like there's not much for us to cover because it's all exposition. There's no back lore or anything to be like oh yeah when this happened but it is it's not boring there's a lot of action yeah, i recommend yeah. it i think you should read it and uh listen to uh the next time we do the second issue to uh see where it ends up yeah, yeah. decent blood and gore for it for most part and the and tea thing to the poor girl <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah hair perfectly placed mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm the king of that but yeah. anywho we hope you enjoyed this second episode of Mikey and Lance at the Comic Chop. If you don't know, for some strange reason, we are part of Slasher's Podcast, which you can hear every week on Mondays wherever fine podcasts are sold. You can also see a quick little condensed version of a video format here um, on our Slasher's Pod YouTube. So if you like it, give us a like, subscribe, pay attention to us, and all the things. If there's a comic book out there you want us to cover, let us know. Yeah, check us out and also make sure you check out the uh, slashers pages as well. 
um we'll have a couple of things like that maybe we'll even if you guys are interested enough maybe we'll make a sloshers chopped t-shirt or stickers or something oh, like that if cute. you guys are interested yeah yeah so. that's cute and also since this is coming out on free comic book day if you happen to be in orlando florida we will be at spooky empire with some cool goodies so message us if you're going to be there and we'll see if yeah. we can uh hit y'all up and give you some fun stuff who knows maybe we'll make our own slasher comic book boom <gasps> Oh my girl. <laughs> Lance just wants to see me in a bunny outfit. He's such a perv. Anyways. Ah. <laughs> with that said, have a good week, everybody. Goodbye and good day. Bye. Die. Oh my goodness. <laughs>